interesting because it's like looking at a photo album from a very important moment in my life. This was the beginning of my career as a film actress. This, op this doing this had opened many doors. Um, and so it's interesting, especially watching the documentary, you s I see myself find my legs as an actress. And I'm acting opposite Al Pacino and these incredible, and Estelle Parson is, is there directing and like all these things. And you see me find, becoming the actress that I want to be, or like trying to find the confidence to bring out a performance. And that's exciting. There must be a lot of personal pride in that. Yeah, it's a personal, but yeah, but in a good way, but it's also like, it's, I guess it's like having a photo album, of a video from when you graduated college or high school. You know what I mean? Or like you threw the football and like you made the football team. You know, it's this thing of like, this was a moment where my life changed making this film and it's videotaped. Like there's a documentary of my life changing, which is really special. So for Salome, you knew what was happening. You had, you had everything for that, but with Wild Salome, that's the more candid thing. So which do you almost prefer out of those? I don't know. I mean, I, to me, I like the documentary. I like both, but I like the documentary because, like I said, you see, I look at myself and I look like such a baby, first of all. <laughs> but also, I like to see myself navigating my way. Like, I, I, it's exciting to me. It makes me... I don't know, it inspires me, like, especially whenever I meet actors, I'm always wanting to give them confidence, you know, to, to like reach higher and challenge themselves. And I watch myself in this film and I see myself go from this, you know, kind of like insecure, nervous person to like more confident. And especially, I mean, that's the journey of Salome too. She like definitely becomes in her own um, by the end of the play. And do you find yourself now passing on tips that Al gave you? Yes, all the time. He tells me things, like he told me things about the camera. I used to be afraid of the camera, but he told me it's actually the most important thing because it's your, it's your direct communication. So more than your scene partner, the camera actually sees into your soul. And when he told me that, it ch completely changed the way I thought about film acting. I used it a lot when I did Tree of Life. There's a lot of that movie that was just kind of like the camera and me hanging out in a garden or, or whatever. And that openness that I ha feel like, okay, I'm not so scared of it, definitely came from working with Al. Thank you. I'm very familiar with Al Pacino as a performer, but yeah. what do you think characterizes him as a director, as a storyteller? He's, as a director, as much as he takes on a, an acting role, and we've seen him, like he can get, it, he's in the acting role. He's just like that as a director. So he's um, all consuming about the project he's working on. Um, and, and then working with him, the one thing I was most surprised about is how funny he is. He's super funny. Um, I was like a little intimidated before I ever met him because you think of like Serpico and like Scar Tony Montoya and like <laughs> Montana. <laughs> and scared of him. Right, I was a little nervous. And then I met him and just realized, oh my gosh, he's so sweet and funny and like, he's my acting godfather. Of course, I mean, you've been working with some fantastic directors lately, Christopher Nolan and Guillermo del Toro. Can you talk a little bit about both of those experiences? Yeah. I like working with directors who have their own point of view and you see at the film and you go, yeah, that's a Guillermo del Toro film or that's a Christopher Nolan film. Um, if you notice, like if even the movies that have had come out the past few years, you know, Catherine Bigelow and Terrence Malick and Jeff Nichols um, and the movies coming out this year, J.C. Shandor's Most Violent Year, Interstellar and um, The Disappearance of Eleanor Rigby, they all f are completely different in tone um, in voice and to me that's the, tr the mark of a great director. With Interstellar, we obviously feel like we're getting something very important from Christopher. I mean, we've had our first trailers, but do you think that's true? Do you think it's an important film? I think there's no such thing as overhyping this. I just saw it. It's insanely good. It's one of the best things. It's, I just can't... Ex I, th I don't think you're going to be disappointed. It's such a sensuous role. I'm curious um, how naturally that came to you, that aspect of the performance. Uh, talking about Salome, it's such a sensuous role. Yeah. Was that something that came naturally to you? No, it was like I was terrified of that whole part of it. Well, I was like, completely insecure, like, gosh, people are freaking out. Um, I was completely insecure. Uh, the idea of the dance, the idea that playing this incredibly, like, this beautiful woman that people were in love with, I was like, what? I, I had a lot of 
problems accepting any of that. Uh, but I read this book that was really helpful called Sisters of Salome, and I started to learn actually that a woman's sexuality is a powerful thing, and we don't need to be afraid of it. And I think in some societies when they, you are afraid of it, those aren't the best <laughs> societies to live in. Um, so no, I, that actually kind of opened me up a lot, uh, especially to the dance. But then also I saw the dance not as like a striptease or seduction. I know that's what it is, but for me, sometimes that's what it is. For me, I saw it as this girl's first sexual experience and as an act of violence because it's murder. So I tried to make the dance as violent and as sometimes as ugly as possible, but yet keep along the lines of the Saturday. Thank you. Thank you.